So I was asked to speak this morning on the subject of launching uh, the United States' uh, newest startup airline. I guess that's a, it's appropriate, therefore, for me to go first. Um, but I really wanted to uh, make most of my presentation somewhat forward-looking uh, rather than uh, a historical exercise. I'm going to try to go quickly and leave plenty of room for questions, though, because we do have a very interesting history, uh, given we've been flying only for six months or eight months now. So uh, I will uh, feel free to uh, 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 be available to answer any questions. The title of my presentation is Our Path to Success in the U.S. Airline Industry. And I want to emphasize the word our path, Virgin America's path, uh, the implication being there is more than one path to success in this business. Um, uh, one of my favorite expressions is, if there's no Southwest, be Southwest. Uh, Southwest Airlines, a uh, great example, a success story in our industry. It's been, uh, the model's been used all over the world, you know, whether it be in Brazil or in Europe or in Asia. Uh, but we have a Southwest in this country, and we have the Southwest in this country. So, so we're different. Uh, we set out to be different. And uh, I'm going to try to tell you uh, why we think that will work for us. Basically, I'm going to try to answer three questions today. Uh, the first one is, what is Virgin America? Some of you, if you've flown with us, you know that already. Uh, if you haven't, uh, I'm going to just uh, spend a second giving you a brief introduction uh, to our company. Second, the kind of the heart of our presentation, why are we going to succeed? And then lastly, what we at Virgin America want from, from you, the, the aviation community. I, 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 don't, I don't believe in getting, spending this much time preparing without uh, getting my own message across too here. So beginning with an overview of Virgin America, we consider ourselves to be a next generation US domestic airline. Uh, by next generation, I am distinguishing us really from two other business models in this country. Number one, what I call the, the legacy carrier or network carrier model of which the regional hub and spoke is a, is a variant, if you will. Uh, and secondly, the pure low cost carrier. Uh, another word for next generation in my mind is a value carrier, uh, an airline that seeks uh, not to be simply the lowest possible cost, nor to provide kind of the ubiquitous uh, geographic coverage and service models of the network carriers, but rather something in between, something where we can uh, offer an excellent level of service, particularly in the economy cabin when we compare ourselves with others, um, uh, and, uh, but to do that at a very, very good price. I think the first uh, next generation carrier in the world was probably JetBlue. And, uh, and as I tell you about us, I'm sure you'll see some comparisons to uh, JetBlue. Uh, and um, and uh, the, I think there have been some others uh, that are heading this direction around the world. Um, and uh, we'll, you can draw your own conclusions about that. Um, we operate Airbus uh, A320 narrow body aircraft with CFM engines. We are headquartered in San Francisco. We, uh, our operations base is uh, SFO uh, Airport. Um, we uh, are growing. We started with three aircraft, launched in August 8th uh, last year. We currently operate 16 aircraft. We will be at at least 22 aircraft by the end of this year. And as of right now, we have 34 aircraft on firm order, uh, either with Airbus or with leasing companies delivering by the end of 2009. So we are a very rapidly growing company. Um, we have, uh, actually I can update that. As of when I put this slide together, we had $300 million in investor capital. That, uh, with the uh, announcement in the Wall Street Journal last week, that's uh, now about $400 million in capital. And we just crossed 1,000 employees uh, about a month ago, and uh, will be nearly 2,000 employees by the end of this year. We have a mission statement. Our mission is to create an airline people love. Um, we really, th this isn't just language for us. If you ask any of our, and I, I challenge you to ask any of our pilots or any of our in-flight teammates, as we call them, flight attendants, what our mission statement is, they will tell you exactly what it is. And uh, they believe it. Um, this is what we are out to do, and it makes a big difference. It colors everything that we do. 
uh, as, uh, as uh, the team uh, trying to build this airline. Um, it is intentionally ambiguous. Who are people, right? People are both guests, but also our teammates. Um, and our, our teammates understand that as well, that we need, there's this virtuous circle, if you will, that um, uh, so commonly talked about in other industries, but so rarely in the airline industry, about if you treat your teammates right, if you treat your employees right, they'll treat their guests right. And the, and the feedback from the guests acts as a catalyst to improve the work environment and, uh, and keep the teammates happy in delivering their service product. That's what we're trying to do. So far, so good. Um, and by the way, shareholders are people too. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm not pointing at the right thing here. Uh, I want to describe our business model, uh, our strategy, if you will, uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, in one simple slide, it really four tenets uh, to our business strategy. The first is that we have a very focused root strategy. We're not trying to be all things to all people, but nor is our root strategy completely dominated by the, the goal of serving one city or one hub. Um, we are focused on a type of market. The type of market that we try to serve is the largest U.S. travel markets. Uh, uh, the best example of that, the, the biggest market in the country by revenues is, of course, New York, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we're in that market, needless to say. Um, we want to serve markets that have lots of O&D traffic. We want to serve markets that have lots of airlines in them already. Uh, we, do, we don't really like one-on-one -on -one confrontations, winner-take-all situations. And, no offense, but I, I want to contrast our strategy here in Roots to, for example, that of Independence Air, Fly Eye, where they entered markets where it was a mano a mano battle with normally United Airlines, and which in which one of the of the carriers uh, really only one of the carriers could survive. You know, we want to enter markets where there may be three, four, five airlines serving them already so that when we take our share, we're taking it from another, a, no, a, a number of other carriers. And, if, and also, if someone wants to in, uh, uh, initiate a competitive action against us, that those blows are absorbed not just by us, but by several other carriers as well. If you think about the math, if, I wanna, if I'm American Airlines and I want to try to hurt Virgin America in New York, LA, and I've got 25% of the ASMs in that market, I'm going to have to, in order to double capacity in that market, I'm going to have to quintuple my own capacity in that market. So it's having a number of carriers present in a marketplace creates a, um, uh, a, a buffer, if you will, in terms of competitive uh, actions in that market. That's what we like. Um, we serve primary airports. Why? Principally because uh, we uh, seek to provide a higher value service, and uh, the people who uh, benefit and enjoy higher value service also tend to fly out of primary airports. Also, obviously, because there's less low cost carrier uh, competition and capacity generally in those airports. Um, although we are principally focused on markets, we do have somewhat of a geographic focus. This came to us a little bit by accident. Uh, but we came to realize over the two or three years prior to our launch that you know, we had an opportunity to become California's hometown airline. Um, uh, we are the only airline based in California. And uh, we do believe uh, that our product and our service and our brand focus has a particular attraction to the California market. And we're trying to take advantage of that. Uh, the way we take advantage of that is uh, simply by taking people who's, uh, who live in the catchment area for LAX and SFO uh, to the places where they want to go. So if you can look at the DOT data and look at the top 10 destinations, O&D destinations, out of those airports, uh, you'll get a sense of where we have been and where we're going in terms of our route map. And finally, and this is related to the first point, we have a coexistent strategy. Uh, our target market share in the markets that we intend to serve by the end of this year is about 15%. Now, those who are strong believers in the S-curve might say that's a very dangerous position to be in. But remember that we are in very big markets 
So even with a 15% market share in those markets, we can provide a, a, a pretty good schedule on a daily basis, you know, five, six, seven flights a day. And, um, and I believe that the true focus of this kind of S-curve economic thinking is to say, do you have an adequate schedule? We think we will in our markets. Um, and, uh, and, that, and that implies coexistence. Uh, we will obviously bring fares down in the markets we serve. We've done that already. And therefore, that will stimulate traffic in those markets. If we have a 15% share, we may uh, gain quite a bit of that simply from stimulating traffic. And as I think you probably already know, the airlines that compete against us in our markets haven't suffered really any decline in load factor whatsoever. Um, and uh, that's the way we like it. We believe in coexistence. Um, the second element of our business model is sustainable low costs. I'll come to that later. The third element is to provide a unique guest experience. Uh, if you have had the opportunity to fly on our planes, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, if you were blindfolded and uh, brought onto an Airbus A320, uh, nine out of 10 times you might have difficulty figuring which airline you were on. If you were blindfolded and brought onto our A320, you would know exactly which airline you're on because it's just different. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. And the last. Uh, the last uh, uh, element of our business model is simply to leverage the power of the Virgin brand. Uh, we are pretty much the only airline in the U.S. history ever launched with prior brand recognition, and it's a pretty darn good one. The uh, aided awareness uh, in our target markets of the Virgin brand name exceeds 80%. For those of you who are kind of marketing uh, focused, uh, that's a nice place to be. Anyway, a uh, little more by way of introduction. This is our uh, current route map. Uh, you can see that uh, out of Los Angeles and San Francisco, we're already serving probably five of the uh, top 10 markets uh, for the people that we fly to. Uh, average uh, stage length is about 1,200 miles. It's a kind of a barbell distribution of stage length uh, based on the geography of our country. Uh, we are uh, achieving excellent utilization right now of about 13.4 hours. Uh, flying 70 flights a day. We have a little bit more now about the uh, flying experience. Um, we do have a first class cabin, uh, and it's not any uh, typical first class cabin. It's 55 inch uh, seating pitch, uh, eight seats, uh, white leather, um, uh, full, full meal service, and, um, and of course our in-flight entertainment experience. Uh, in the back we have 32 slash 33 inch pitch, uh, we have um, uh, leather seats, black leather seats in this case, um, and on every seat in the plane, we have a state-of-the-art uh, Panasonic uh, manufactured uh, digital in-flight entertainment system that features uh, 18 channels of live television, six channels of cash TV, 25 pay-per-view movies, uh, games. We have uh, a uh, chat function, kind of unique uh, in the airline industry, seat-to-seat -seat chat function. Um, we are wired for broadband and have announced that we'll be uh, implementing uh, broadband across our fleet by the, probably by the first half of 2009. Um, and uh, one of the most interesting characteristics of all of this system is that it is also our food and beverage delivery system. What you see there in the middle of the screen is a touch screen, and uh, we have a system whereby passengers can order from their seat any free beverage, uh, coffee, water, et cetera, or paper, uh, excuse me, kind of buy on board style uh, uh, food options in coach ranging from a $2 uh, bag of potato chips to a $10 uh, fruit and cheese plate, et cetera. A very, very interesting and unique uh, uh, delivery system. Keeps the, our in-flight teammates in the aisles, uh, meeting and greeting passengers. Um, uh, the uh, degree of service is really something that uh, I, I would venture to say you can't find in any other coach cabin in the world. Um, in terms of our uh, capitalization, I mentioned that uh, it now exceeds $400 million. Um, that's been provided basically by three shareholders. As you all know, Richard Branson, the Virgin Group, is our largest single shareholder, although he is a minority of our total. 
Um, and uh, we also have two private equity firms, Black Canyon Capital based in Los Angeles and Cyrus Capital based here in New York. Um, we have uh, financed our aircraft entirely through sale leaseback transactions or let's say operating direct operating leases in the case of our GCAS deliveries. Um, that we have been able to achieve reasonably attractive terms. I think they're win-win situations in terms of uh, both us as an airline as well as uh, as our uh, uh, as well as to our fin aircraft financing sources. Uh, all of our transactions have been structured with operating leases on eight to twelve year terms, and the sources have been quite varied, both domestic as well as overseas. Um, we are uh, we are source agnostic. And, uh, and try to be creative in terms of uh, finding low-cost capital for our uh, company. Um, we also have a very important PDP financing uh, on a third-party basis from HSH Nordbank. I'll cover that a little bit more later on. Okay, uh, so much for an introduction to Virgin America. I'd like to just take us through uh, a few slides now on why we think we're gonna be successful, especially in these somewhat challenging markets. The first reason I believe that we're going to be successful is because we have sustainable low costs. Um, this list here is really nothing new, nothing that you haven't seen before. Uh, it is a, a list of best practices in the airline industry that have been around for quite some time. Uh, you could go to uh, a Harvard Business School case study, I'm sure, uh, on Southwest Airlines and find this list, so there's no secrets here. Uh, it's, it's simply a matter of sticking uh, to the plan uh, and executing. And, um, and I think it's fair to say that if you look at startups that uh, have not performed well over the last five or ten years, it's generally not because their costs are low. Typically they fail for other reasons, either market acceptance, lack of capital, whatever it might be, competitive response. So um, I'm not going to take a, a too much time to go through this list. Um, I can certainly cover anything uh, you'd like in Q&A afterward. Uh, maybe I'll just touch on um, uh, productivity of our employees uh, for a moment. That has been excellent. Uh, we are essentially working to the FAA legal maximums in terms of our frontline employees. Um, you know, again, why, why wouldn't you if you're a startup airline? Um, and, uh, but we have that uh, ability. And let me explain the last one too. As I mentioned, uh, we provide food for our economy passengers uh, for sale. Um, we, uh, we do put costs into the service in that sense, but we, do it, uh, uh, but we do it where it has an opportunity to generate ancillary revenue. Um, so it, uh, you know, the idea of not ubiquitously uh, kind of throwing product at our, uh, uh, at our guests uh, and absorbing all of the costs uh, is, in my mind, a way uh, going forward w in which uh, Virgin America, as well as uh, other airlines, can control their costs. Um, we believe that we will be successful because our guests like our product. It's as simple as that. Um, this is not rocket science, and yet you don't often see this discussed in the U.S. airline industry where for so long, uh, network carriers have kind of uh, uh, have 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 said this mantra that domestic coach travel is a commodity and that nobody cares about anything but frequent flyer miles and fares. Um, well, we think we're proving that to be wrong. In fact, we think JetBlue started to prove the industry uh, wrong in this regard, and we think that we are, have simply taken it to another level. Um, we were absolutely delighted when, after we'd been operating for only three months, uh, last November of 07, the Zagat's airline survey came out and we were ranked number one domestically for our first class cabin and, and number two among 23 airlines overall. Uh, number two, number one was Midwest, as you may know, which uh, has a particular uh, a brand of, of service that they call economy. Um, so uh, we were just absolutely delighted. You can see some of the other rewards. Uh, I also want to, oh, let me just go get this. I wanted to uh, show you also a, a magazine, this, this month's uh, Fortune magazine. Nope, wrong one. 
this one that has Steve Jobs on the cover. Um, uh, and I wanted to uh, pull a little bit. It's called the uh, Life at the Top Road Warrior column. There's a gentleman by the name of Todd Oldham, who is the chief designer of uh, Old Navy, who is quoted in terms of uh, what he likes about travel. And he says, favorite way to fly. I was absolutely delighted when I first flew Virgin America last year, and it's my first choice now. I fly in the first class cabin, and it's very civilized. The seats and the lighting are great, and the food is delicious. So here's a guy who's, frankly, cooler than any of us in this room, who has, is willing to go out on a limb and say that Virgin America uh, is, um, is something that he, a brand that he wants to identify himself with. I mean, that, I think that's very powerful, and you don't see that too often in the US domestic airline industry. So I'll be buying Old Navy from now on. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will be successful because there is a secular trend going on in this industry that we are taking advantage of. The legacy carriers ha are shrinking. Uh, they have been shrinking for 15 years in a row now uh, in terms of their share of the U.S. market. Uh, they've been shrinking an average of 1.3 percentage points per year. Um, and that trend has never stopped. In other words, there was not a single year in the last 15 in which they did not shrink. Um, we believe that trend is going to continue. We believe, in fact, that at the moment, it's, for cyclical reasons, it's accelerating. Um, and we believe that that is the best time for Virgin America to grow. Uh, we don't have to uh, take uh, rest market share away from the legacy carriers. All we have to do is get our share of what they're leaving for us. You know, I, I won't go through uh, all of the details here, uh, but I think the reasons for this, I, I think, are pretty well understood. Um, they are, uh, they continue to have cost inefficiencies, which frankly the bankruptcies did not address. So certainly, some of you are probably debt holders that took a hit in the uh, bankruptcies of the network carriers in the last several years. Um, and certainly, that reduced their cash uh, outlays. But it didn't change the foundation. It didn't change the DNA. And therefore, in the domestic markets, um, they are continuing to, uh, to shrink. Um, and, uh, and you can read, I think, the, some of the other issues um, that I focused on here as well. Um, obviously, with the uh, merger announcement of Delta and Northwest, um, we expect that that will lead to additional uh, domestic capacity reductions, um, and we think that's good for us. Um, we do believe that uh, in the long run, Delta and, Delta and Northwest combined uh, will be a carrier that we, will be better for their shareholders uh, than the um, than the carriers were on an independent basis, but we also believe it's going to be better for our shareholders. Um, we are in a domestic revenue environment that actually remains quite strong. Um, so while we're taking advantage of a secular long-term trend, we also happen to be in a cyclical environment that right now uh, continues to be decent and obviously the elephant in the room is fuel costs, and be happy to talk about that. But, um, uh, but I wanted to just uh, suggest to you that from a revenue environment standpoint, things seem to be going relatively well with RASMs uh, approaching, or in fact even exceeding, the all-time highs set in 2000, uh, all-time high load factors, and the capacity reductions that I just mentioned. Uh, we will succeed because the, of the power uh, that the Virgin brand brings to our uh, visibility with consumers. If we could try to put a dollar amount uh, in terms of what we would have to spend to recreate the PR, recreate in paid advertising the impressions, if you will, that we get through PR, it would be in the tens of millions of dollars. It's, in, it's really quite incredible. Um, whether it be, you know, Pam Anderson appearing at our Las Vegas launch party, 
whether it be our partnership with uh, Victoria's Secret and the fe having been featured on their CBS uh, primetime uh, show last fall at the fashion show. Uh, I'm going to mention um, we've been on the Colbert Report, Ellen DeGeneres, Dr. Phil, Squawk Box, Today Show. Uh, on Online, we've been on Dignation, Jaunted, Boing Boing. Um, everybody knows Boing Boing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we get an average of 35 inbound calls per week from the press requesting interviews or comments. Our safety video has 120,000 hits on YouTube. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing and, and it's been a big help for us. Uh, we will succeed because we are operating our company well. Uh, uh, we, we, there's always opportunity to improve there, um, but so far so good. Uh, we achieved a 77 on t 77 percent on time performance uh, in the month of March. That is, 77 percent of our flights arrived within 15 minutes of their scheduled arrival time. We had a 99.8 percent completion factor, 13.3 uh, hours per day. Uh, the techies would appreciate that we are carrying a relatively low fault levels, both in our cockpit and as well as in the in-flight entertainment system. Um, our, our headquarters uh, systems uh, are maintaining excellent uptime. And as you can see, our load factors are starting to build as well. We achieved 71% in March, which is, of course, a typically a low month of the year. And uh, we expect to better that in um, well, basically in the you know, the rest of the summer. Um, one that I'm particularly proud of that you won't hear very often is the ratio of complaints to compliments. These are written complaints to written compliments. We get one compliment for every six complaints, or six to one ratio. And no one else publishes that statistic, but I guess if you would ask a network carrier, it would be in the hundreds. Um, or they would say something like, you get compliments? <laughs> anyway, last but not least, we have great partners, and we will, uh, and our success is uh, in large part due, or in, 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 in measurable part due to the, uh, the help that we've had from them. Um, Airbus, uh, all of our financiers, I, I can see I'm running over time, so I'm not going to spend much more time on this. Uh, Lufthansa Techniques, our lease advisor, Skyworks Capital, uh, all have been tremendously helpful to us. Um, I'm just going to rush forward. What do we want from you? Uh, we want more planes. We have 36 firm orders. That includes two options that we have yet to uh, exercise, but we absolutely will. Um, and the last one of those delivers in Q1 of 2010. We are seeking, and don't laugh, uh, 20 to 40 more new Airbus A320s or very recent uh, vintage CFM powered A320s, hopefully by the end of 2010. As you can imagine, some of the industry events are giving us an opportunity to uh, see a bit more of that and we will uh, try very hard to take advantage of. But if you're a leasing company out there and you've got planes, I want to talk to you. Um, we want you to take advantage of the additional financing opportunities that we have. Uh, of our original uh, 18 order plus six options, 24 aircraft, we still have eight that are as of yet unspoken for from a sale leaseback opportunity. They do, the first of those delivers in October 2008, the last in, as I mentioned, early 2010. Uh, we are comfortable with the operating lease structure and we do not overfinance our aircraft. Um, we also may have additional opportunities for PDP financing uh, to the extent that we are able to find more aircraft. And eventually, somebody who wants to lead our IPO is going to knock on my door and offer me an unsecured credit facility. Um, and lastly, we want new aircraft technology. Uh, this, is a, this is a message to the aviation community in general. Uh, we have been, from the day we placed our order in 2004, considering that there will be a next generation aircraft, uh, narrow body aircraft uh, from Airbus and Boeing and their engine suppliers at some point in the future. 
Uh, we are scheduling, we have been scheduling our leases to mature in the 2015 to 2020 timeframe. Uh, we would love to see uh, and we would anticipate being a very significant customer of a new generation aircraft it w if it were available. Uh, the market needs a solution. In $100 oil, we need more efficient solutions. And uh, we also have aspirations to be, um, as, as you can imagine, with Richard Branson being our largest shareholder, and even of our own accord, we want to be, we want to set a trend for greenness, for eco-responsibility uh, in, uh, in this industry. Uh, it's, it's a growing issue for this industry that we have to face head on. And the, uh, the only way that I know of that we're going to face it successfully is with the help of our manufacturers. So let me just sum up. Virgin America is a next generation U.S. airline. We are a people first airline. We're pursuing a unique niche in the domestic uh, aviation business. We are an efficient company and we are backed by proven and deep pocketed winners. We will succeed because we have award-winning, outstanding, unique service on board our planes. We have sustainable low costs. We are taking advantage of secular industry trends. We have the power of the Virgin brand behind us. And we have a commitment to operational ex excellence and great partners. And lastly, we need more aircraft, we need more financing, and we need new technology, narrow-body aircraft.